There's a lighthouse on a hillside that overlooks a live sea when I'm tossed it sends out a light that I might see and the light that shines in the darkness now will safely lead me o'er if it wasn't for the lighthouse my ship would sail no more Everybody that lives around us, they say tear the lighthouse down. You know the big ships, they don't sail this way anymore. There's no use in standing around. Then my mind goes back to one stormy night when just in time I saw the light. It was light from that old lighthouse that stands. And I thank God for the lighthouse I owe my life to Him Jesus is the lighthouse and from the of sin he has shown his light around me that I could clearly see if it wasn't for the lighthouse where Greetings, brothers and sisters. It's wonderful to have you here on Palm Sunday. I hope you're being blessed, having a blessed day, and enjoyed the drive-in uh, worship service this morning. And uh, that's been a real blessing to the island here, Harker's Island. And we just thank all of you for participating. We thank the pastors of the island. They are um, uh, stepping out and beyond uh, their call to, to bring you a service. And it was a wonderful service. The songs, Paul Gillikin had uh, Pastor Curtis Goings praying, uh, the invocation, Pastor Lee uh, Pritchard doing the uh, opening, and um, I hope I haven't missed nobody, and me. Uh, I was there as well. Enjoyed it. It was a great time. Uh, Pastor Dale preached a wonderful uh, Palm Sunday sermon, and if you weren't there, you missed a, you missed a good service. But I thank you for joining me to, to, tonight. The song you just heard, <clears throat> Uh, the Lighthouse. It's an old song. It was written by uh, Ron Henson uh, many years ago. And um, uh, what a blessing that has been over the years to many, many people. The Lighthouse. Jesus, you know, is the real lighthouse. It's, uh, we live on Harker's Island. We, we usually think of a lighthouse uh, and uh, we think of Cape Lookout Lighthouse. But, you know, Jesus is our lighthouse. He is, his light goes out 
not only for just a few miles, but through eternity and touches lives all over. The Lighthouse, a beautiful, beautiful song. And uh, I hope you uh, received a blessing with that today. On Palm Sunday, you know, Christians celebrate <clears throat> the triumphant infant of Jesus, entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. This was the week before the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Palm Sunday is often referred to as Passion Sunday, and this marks the beginning of Holy Week. For this week is the most monumental week in the history of man. This is when Jesus made that track, his way toward Calvary, and gave himself for it, for our sins. Died on a cruel cross on Mount Calvary, and he did it for you and he did it for me. And I thank God. I really appreciate this time of the year. It, it, it sort of begins for us here on Palm Sunday. But next Sunday, it, we cul culminate. It comes to a climax with the resurrection of Jesus when he came forth out of the grave. I want to read you a passage of scripture today from the, from the word of God. Uh, he's found in Mark, uh, the 21st chapter. I'll just read a, a few verses to you today if you don't mind. Um, let's begin reading at the 10th verse. Begin reading at the 10th verse here in uh, Matthew 21, verse 10. When he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Who is this? Look at that passage of Scripture, to, uh, verse 10. Who is this? You know, down through the centuries, this is the most important question that man can answer. Who is Jesus? We notice right off the bat in the, in the next verse, it says, well, this, the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth. I say to you today that Jesus was more than a prophet. He was more than a great teacher. It's important that you answer that question to the uh, in the right way before you can have eternal life. For Jesus Christ is the only access uh, to heaven, the only access that we can have with the Father, having an intimate relationship with Him, is through Jesus Christ. The Bible says there's no other name under heaven whereby men can be saved, but that by the name of Jesus. And there's coming an hour when every man and woman shall bow and call Him Lord. You know, receive Him today and find peace with God and you'll be blessed in eternity or reject Him. And the ultimate is no blessing at all. You know, they say the right words, these people that were following Jesus, the noise in the streets, the dust was coming up. And they were crying, Hosanna to the King. Hosanna, uh, uh, praise, praise Him. And, and shouting and dancing and throwing leaves in the way of the donkey and uh, they put a blanket on the, on the donkey and let Jesus ride on it. They wave palm branches, Hosanna, singing Hosanna. You know, they had the, they had the right concept. They, they, they said the right words, but they missed the point. They called him Hosanna to the son of David, to the son of David, and this is the prophet. They missed it altogether. Jesus was more than a prophet, more than the son of David. It was talking about the lineage maybe. But I say to you, he was the son of God. And let me add this. He was the son of the only begotten of the Father. You know, if you take that word out, you're belittling Christ. He's just not another son of God. He was the only begotten son of God. If Jesus were just a man, he could never atone for our sins. But thank God he was more than a man. So they said the right words, but they missed the point. They had the, had the, uh, uh, the theology in a sense, but they still end up rejecting Jesus. Did you know that these, these people that were, were praising him there in the streets with all the people gather around and glorifying him, in just a few days, they turned and said, crucify him, crucify him. Isn't it strange how man is? We must accept the truth. If they'd have really accepted that truth when he came through uh, 
Bethany, when he came through Jer Bethphage and came through uh, Jerusalem, if they'd have really said, this is the Son of God, and a worship that they'd have followed him right on to the cross, cross and, be, and would have been saved, except it what he did. But they didn't. They did not accept him who he was. Knowing the truth is not the same thing as doing the truth. Knowing the truth. There's a lot of people that know Jesus, that know who Jesus is. There's a whole lot of people that know who Jesus is. Here. But you have to know who Jesus is here. It's a difference. If you know who he is in your heart, there's no problem serving him. If you know who he is in your heart, there's no problem living for him. Uh, now Jesus lived and died for us. You know, as Jesus made that choice to ride through on that donkey there on that day, we have to make a choice to accept Him who He is. He is the Son of God. He's our Savior. He is the one that purchased our salvation. He gives us access not only to God, but He gives us access to heaven. Let me give you just a little, uh, a little illustration. I thought it was kind of cute. And, um, and I, I want you to, to listen with me, if you would. It's a story. I, I can't validate it because I weren't that old. But this is what I have read anyway, and I'll pass it on to you. Anyway, it's just like, just like Jesus. There was a story from the, from the days of Civil War about a woman who sat crying on a park bench right outside the White House. And there she sat, weeping, weeping. Why was she weeping? She was weeping because her husband had just been killed in the war. And her son was in the war and had left it, had became AWOL and was arrested and was about to face death, the firing squad. She was so broken up, sitting there hopefully that she could get in in touch with the president and he'd have compassion on her and save her son's life. She sat there weeping and weeping. There was a little boy that came up, a little boy that came up and said, ma'am, why are you weeping so? And she tried to tell him, she said, my husband is dead. My son is, is locked up facing death. And if I can get to the president, I was hoping that he would pardon him and let him live. That little boy says, don't cry, ma'am. He says, follow me. That woman didn't know what, what was going on, but she followed that little boy. He turned and headed right up the steps to the White House. He walked past the guards to the big doors, and the soldier standing there said, she's with me. They walk in on down the hall in all these here important rooms and people. She got to a room, and just he got to a room and just walked right in. And there sat the president behind the desk. He brought that lady with him, walked right in. I walked up to, the, to where his dad was sitting and said, Daddy, he said, I've got a woman here who wants to talk to you. He said, all right, what's going on? And that lady poured her heart out as she wept, her husband being dead, her son facing the firing squad. And because of her going to the president, he had compassion. They say it was President Lincoln. He had compassion and pardoned that boy. You see, in a sense, Jesus Christ was represented by that little boy. He knows the Father. He can take us where we need to go. The only access that we need for heaven is Jesus Christ. I wrote a song one time that says, When God looks at us, He'll only see the blood. That's what he looks for in his people is the blood. I trust you're a Christian today on this Palm Sunday. And as we face this, this important week, I hope that you have given your life to Christ. If you haven't, you can do it today. You can do it right now. If you pray a simple little prayer, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know the wages of sin is death. I know that I can never go to heaven in the shape that I'm in. 
But Jesus, if you'll come into my life, forgive me, wash me with your blood. I will serve you. I will live for you from this day on. And Jesus, I thank you for it in Christ's name. A simple prayer like that can get you into the kingdom. I want to say thank you for being with us today. I thanks again for my church folks, the Free Grace Church, for, for uh, 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 watching and all these other people that have turned on today. Thank you so much. May God richly bless you. And we'll see you midweek. Amen. God bless you.